Hello, and welcome to another episode of CTEX Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to address the need to display continuously sampled data in alternative ways. We're going to start with Post Samples module and read a data file that has significant data density. Now, if I look at this data in a traditional way with post samples where I display the spheres, we can see that the spheres are nearly on top of each other. This data is quite dense. And so we want to look at some alternative methods. And the most obvious ones that we offer is if we go into samples, we can turn off spheres and then go to tubes and display colored tubes. Now the colored tubes option handles continuously sampled data better than spheres. And now we'll take this and, and we can enhance it a little bit by changing the diameter of the tubes. So we specify the radius here, and by default it computed a value for us of almost 4. So I'm going to make the minimum radius, so the radius associated with the minimum values, half of the amount associated with the maximum. And now we get tubes of varying radius, and this is an interesting look. But occasionally people want to display multiple variables, or to display this data associated with continuous sampling, like MIP data, as a plot beside the boring. So how would we go about doing that? Well, it turns out that with MVS, it's fairly straightforward. So again, I'm going to go in here, and if we look at the ports available to us, one of these ports is the sample field. And when the spheres are turned off, which they are now, if we take a module that allows us to look at this data, so I'm just going to use select data, connect it to this last Lubeck port, we get lines. Now these lines have the same data that our colored tubes had. So these lines are drawn from point to point down each boring with data associated with the values at that location. And you notice that there are two different data components. There is the concentration, which will be processed using the options, the pre-processing options that are available to us in post samples. So by default, now we will have log processed this data. And also the radius, which we have made um, variable, so it's going to have the same trend that our data has at this point because our minimum values will have a, the, be associated with blue and our max values with red because we're changing from radiuses of 2 to 4 roughly. So let's go back and look at this. So we can take this data and instead of just displaying this line, we can use one of MVS's modules, and I'm going to connect post samples back up and zoom in on this, and so that the viewer doesn't change on us, we'll set the auto normalize to none. Now, what that does is, as I reread the data or connect new modules, the view won't change. So what we're going to do is use just one module, and this is an MVS module called Field Math. Now, Field Math can do far more than we're using it for right now. It can build data components based on coordinates or data from one or more fields, from one or more data components. So we're going to pass the data here. And we don't need to create new data. We already have the data we want, which is our LFFD data. So I'm going to turn off data here so it isn't going to bother to do anything about that. But what we are going to do is we're going to 
change the coordinates. Remember, we have a line coming in here. So instead of just drawing the line, we're going to draw the line so that added to the line, we will just add in the uh, radius times the multiplier, and we'll make that multiplier one of our variables. We have four variables here, F1. And we'll just add another variable as an offset. Now, since these are both zero, our line will be drawn. Let's turn off the borings for a second and connect the line. Our lines haven't been affected. But if we make the multiplier of the radius, let's make it two, all of a sudden now these lines aren't straight anymore. They're going to be drawn like you would draw a plot of this parameter. And we can look at this right alongside our borings. So zoom in and look at this one. And when we get to our minimum values, because this is drawn where the minimum radius is 2, it's going to offset automatically for us here and draw this plot. Now this is useful. Why do we want this plot versus just having our colored boring? Well, if we only have one kind of data, it may not be that important to us. But what if we have geology data also that we'd like to show as our colored tube and we want to see our you know, MIP data right alongside it? We can do that with this method. Now there are other ways to accomplish the same thing. Right now we're using the radius parameter, but we could change our equation and actually use the data itself. And when we do that, we want to subtract the minimum value of the data because this data is log processed. It could potentially have negative and positive values. So if we tra subtract min, excuse me, a and zero from the data, then we will get a zero where we're at the minimum of the data and we'll get a larger value as we approach the maximum of the data. Now, notice this looks basically the same except now the data when it is zero is right along our axis. So if we don't want to have an offset, this equation allows us to do that. And we can always add the offset back in here. So now if we look at our plot, we have just barely enough offset that the line sits right beside the boring. So we might want to increase that a little bit. And now we have basically the same look. Now the second equation works even if we don't have variability in the uh, radius minimum and maximum. So let's make the radius min and max the same. And notice now that our, our radius parameter wouldn't be varying, but we can accomplish the same thing we had using this plot. And the last thing that I want to show you is that if we go to a top view, so right now we're looking from the south, 90 degree elevation, notice that our line is being drawn going to the plus x, basically being drawn, increasing the x away from our boring. So when we look at it again in a top view, the line is drawn to the right. If we go back to field math, we could draw the line so that it is going vertical. So now it is. So now if we were viewing this model from the east, at some angle, this is going to give us a better plot. And if we wanted to view the model from the southeast, now that's kind of the wrong angle. We could actually put this offset, apply it to both x and y, and now our line is being drawn off to the northeast so that when we view it from the southeast, we're at 90 degrees to it. So again, we'll go back to a top view. 
see our draw line is being drawn towards the northeast. So when viewed from the southeast, we're looking perpendicular to the line, and so it stands out, the, the line plot, so it stands out the best. So by either adding or subtracting to the x and y coordinates, we can draw the line, either our original was drawing the line parallel to the east direction, we are now drawing it parallel to northeast, we can draw southeast, south, southwest by adding or subtracting from our x and y coordinate. And we could even get more complex if we wanted to put in a trig. Here, what multipliers to apply to this, we could draw it in any angle on the compass. But frankly, have, being able to draw it every 45 degrees, you know, when you're, when you're only rotating your model 15 or 20, 30 degrees to either side, being within a 45 degree window is really all you need. So these options are simple and very easy to use. Again, we could simplify this equation. If we use a variable radius in post samples, we can just use an1 here. Now again, right now, there's no offset, but all we have to do is go back here and make one of these bigger. And now we have that offset again. So with this method, using field math, you're able to take this line and affect the coordinates of the line, redraw the line with a position that is affected by the data. Very simply, with this method, you're able to potentially display multiple data components that might be correlated at the same time. You can have a plot to the plus x that is one data component to the plus minus x that's another and have a boring that shows a th yet a third. Um, and if you want to go crazy, you can do more than two or three, but you're going to find it might be difficult for people to see what's happening. So thank you for taking the time to watch. That's it for another of uh, CTEX Tips and Tricks.